The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... E.G. Marshall. What lovers say to each other should be written on the wind and in running water. For love talk flows smoothly and flows freely. Most people are experienced enough to take it all with a wink or a grain of salt. However, here and there, now and then, you find someone who takes it seriously. Are you saying we should steal that money? Well, steal is the word, I guess. It's stealing. Myra, this is wrong. I want no part of it. Oh, yes, you do. Your share, 50%. No! I know. You're a sensitive, ethical person. You'll need a certain amount of time to talk yourself into it. Be my guest. mystery drama, The Blood Red Wine, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan, and stars Joan Lovejoy and Ralph Bell. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The best is yet to be the last of life for which the first was made. One hesitates to take issue with that beautiful poetic sentiment of Mr. Browning, but growing old these days can present a multitude of problems, especially in a youth-oriented society. And then, of course, the fact remains that most young fools grow into old fools. Listen to that thunder. Bad storm. I hope the roof won't leak. It's this wind. It gets in underneath the roof tiles. I was hoping you'd fixed it. Well, the truth is, we need a new roof. That ain't all we need. You uh, said you'd see Frank? Yeah. All he can give me is a job selling on the road. The road? Now, if you think you're going to leave me to be all alone... Myra, I'll... I don't have too many options. You mean he's got nothing else? Nothing else I can do. Look, Myra, I belong on the road. Then why did we buy this old farmhouse? Well, I thought maybe I could paint. Yeah. It turns out I'm all right. But not good enough. Okay. So what happens now? I go back to doing the only thing I'm really good at. At 52, it's back to the road, huh? Back to traveling with all the pressure. Oh, it's not that bad. After all you've done for Frank, he can't find anything else? Anything else would be charity. When do you start? Anytime the rain stops and I can get on a plane. Well, if that's what you want to do. I don't want to do it. Oh, sure. I don't know how to do anything else well enough to get paid for it. Well, at least if you got paid well enough. Myra, I'm lucky to have the job. Well, when you're in New York, you can bring my sister the pictures I promised her. I, uh, I won't be in New York. What do you mean you won't be in New York? New York and New England, that's your territory. Well, the, the uh, last couple of years, Frank had to put a new man on it. But that's your territory. Those are your accounts. You build it up from nothing. That's, that's where all the money is. Frank would like to expand uh, in the South. I see. And old Joel here is just the man to open it up. Myra, it was that or nothing. What you could do is pick another line from somebody else and buck Frank in New York. Well, that would be disloyal. That can't be the doorbell. Why would anyone... Well, I'd better answer it, I guess. 
Uh, please, may I come in? Shut the door before we get flooded out of here. Well, uh, sure. Come on in. Oh, thank you. Hi. Oh, Joe, uh, look. This man is sick. Oh, help him out of that wet coat. Uh, Poor man is drenched through. Uh, Put up some tea. Yes, uh, a good cup of hot tea. And and need more. Pour a glass of that boysenberry wine. That'll perk him up. Uh, Mister, what are you doing out on a night like this? Uh, don't I? Uh, well, here, uh, this is great for you. Yeah. No, no, I don't. I don't think. I, uh, hold, hold him up, Joe. I think he's got a fall. Uh, I got him. Uh, let, let me help you get this down, friend, huh? My wife makes it herself. We we grow a special strain of poison Be careful, here. Joe. You'll spill it on a shirt. I can't swallow. Joe, Joe, he's in real trouble. What is it, mister? Doctor. I need, I need a doctor. A doctor? It's a heart attack. Oh, no. Heart. Heart. Pain. Here, I'll, I'll uh, hold on to him. You get the folding cot, Joe, uh, quick. All right, 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 right. It's just inside the door of the storeroom. Mister, you, you'll be all right, aren't you? Uh, doctor. Now, now, don't say anything. It's a, it's a strain to talk. Just just try to relax. J- don't even move, huh? Joe? I, I got it. All right, I got it. Oh, good. Uh, Stretch it out. All right. Uh, that's it. Oh, that's good. Now, let's help him lie down. Uh, hold on to my arm, buddy. Yeah. Keep, keep him very still. Now, unbutton his collar. Oh. Loosen up his clothes. Oh. And remove his, his wristwatch. See if that ring comes off. Doctor, this is a doctor. Well, there's that, there's that young uh, doctor, Kessley. He lives just a couple of miles down the road. The road uh, hasn't been washed out. All right, I'll try him. Uh, I, I was driving north to Philadelphia, and the wires got uh, wet. Look, you better not uh, talk, mister. Uh, Myra. What? I can't get a, a dial tone. Well, try to do something. Well, what, what can I do? The phone's dead. The, the lines must be down. Uh, what are we... Going to do about him. I, I, I couldn't just sit there, so I, I got out and started to walk. Look, just I, just try uh, to lay perfectly still. Uh, huh? uh, suddenly, this awful pain in my chest. Myra, isn't there anything uh, we can do? And the pain, the pain kept getting worse. And then I saw your house. I could go for uh, a doctor. You'd never get there. Uh, well, we we, we got to do something. I don't know what to tell you. Listen, look, Mister. You mustn't strain yourself. I'm, I'm being punished. Uh, what did he say? I stole the money. The money in my antique case. The money. Money? Please, will you return the money to Phelps? Look, look, uh, don't, don't say anything. You never I... trace it to me. Weeks or months before they even. Uh, before they even know the money's gone. Re- return the money to whom? A quarter of a million dollars. Now, bring it back to Phelps. Oh, sure. Sh- sure we will. Now, look, please. Please, Red. Uh, and tell him J.B. Lucas was a fool, but J.B. Lucas could never be a crook. Look, if you stay absolutely still... Never be a crook. Joe, Yes, ma'am. Oh. He's dead. Oh, poor fellow. He, he looks so young. Couldn't be a day over 35. Oh. What are we going to do? Well, there isn't much we can do tonight. If the storm lets up, we can phone the sheriff or uh, I can... Uh, Go get him if I have to. What about his attaché case? Oh, we better place that on the cot, I guess. You think there's really a quarter of a million dollars inside that case? Well, if you said so, why not? For all the good it could do him now. Well, nothing can do him any good now or any harm. Let's, uh, move him out of the kitchen. That one sure woke me. Myra? Yes. Did it wake you too? No. I've been up. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Ah, oh, yes, you are. I can tell. 
to get that quiet tone in your voice. You thinking about him downstairs on the cot in the storeroom? Maybe. J.B. Lucas. Isn't that what he said his name was? Yes. Now he's better off out of it. Myra. At 35 or somewhere around there. He made his move. He decided to gamble. All or nothing. Go for broke. He lost. But he also won. If you look at it another way. Well, what did he win? He's dead. That's what he won. Myra, you all right? Yeah. I can tell you all about him. You never saw him before. You know what he died of? Well, obviously, his heart just... Sure. But I'll tell you what helped it along. A guilty conscience. Which means he wasn't a professional crook. He had a dead-end job. As a clerk. How do you know? So his chance to get out of it. To be free. To come, go, have money. And everything money can give you. And he took that chance. And he lost. Yes. He lost. Because he made his move too late. After he was all eaten away inside. But he also won. Well, you keep saying that, but I don't see what or how. Because he doesn't have to put up with 30 more dull, drab, hopeless years. He doesn't have to feel frustrated and cheated. I think I know what you're going to say. You have a talent for painting. But not quite enough. You have a talent for selling. But you don't know how to turn it to your own advantage. The result is... You make other men rich. I guess I'm not lucky, that's all. But you are lucky, Joel. You are. Everybody hits the jackpot once in his life. Well, I guess I'm still waiting for it to happen to me. You don't have to wait any longer. It just happened. What just happened? Downstairs, lying on a dead man's chest, is an attache case with a quarter of a million dollars. What are you saying? We should steal that money? Yes. Myra. Steal is the word. Oh, I suppose we could dress it up by calling it something else, but it, it wouldn't change anything. The second that man closed his eyes and died, I knew we were going to take that money. Myra, this is wrong. Joel, honey, if it was right, we wouldn't be having this problem, would we? You've just taken leave of your senses. Oh, no. No, not just. I took leave of my senses 30 years ago. On my wedding day. I was 17 and stupid. Oh, no, no. I no. never had an education. I didn't even finish high school. And you were so smart. Oh, to think a college boy like you could fall for an ignorant little nobody like me. You were never a nobody. So anything you did was all right. And as the years went by, we didn't have an awful lot. Oh, we always lived well. We should have lived much better. You should have made three, four, five times as much money. Oh, now, it's Myra. It's true. All you had to do was stand up to Frank Desmond. But you were afraid. Things were very complicated. No, they were very simple. You wanted Frank to have a good opinion of you. You thought you'd alienate him by standing up for your rights. And I paid for it. Myra. Joel. That money downstairs. That's your chance. Your only chance. What do you say? Joel can only give you one of two answers. Yes or no. And what answer would you give? Aha. Uh -huh. And now, what answer would you give if you could be virtually certain no one would ever find out. Well, you don't have to commit yourself. But Joel does. And he has to do it when I return with Act Two shortly. How 
how easy it is to be virtuous when no one is assaulting your virtue. How readily one may resist temptation if the forbidden fruit is completely devoid of fragrance and flavor. Would David have lusted after Uriah's wife had she been elderly and ugly? Eh, what can we say? Is morality basically a matter of what one can afford? Who knows? Myra, it's wrong. Sure. I've never done anything wrong in my life. That isn't true. You've done a great many wrong things. I'm talking about sins. Vanity is a sin. False pride is a sin. Lying is a sin. When did I ever lie? Your whole life has been a lie. Myra, I never realized it. You must hate me. No. I love you. How could you love me and say those things? Joel, so far, absolutely no one knows he's been here. We have to get in touch with the sheriff. If we do that, how can we keep the money? No. We don't call the sheriff. We, we know nothing about but it. But J.B. Lucas came here. He, he... he says he came here. Now, it won't be light for two or three more hours. And if the storm keeps up, maybe more than that. Now, let's get dressed. Why? So we can get him back to his car. We don't even know where his car is. We'll find it. In this weather? It has to be down the road. Well, how can you be sure? He said he was driving north to Philadelphia. It means he was on the turnpike. He, he felt this heart attack coming on. He had to get off at the Jessup exit and travel east to get here. Now, let's get him dressed. Is, uh, is this... Everything he was wearing. I think so. Okay. Take the money out of the attaché case. And put it in the drawer for now. No, my, uh, Do you have a choice, Joel? But what if someone might see us, me? Who's going to be out at this time of the night in this kind of weather? Who's around to be out, anyway? Doc Kessler is two miles and a half to the west, and everybody else is safely tucked into bed. <laughs> hold it. Hold it. There's his car. Now, just pull up. Myra. Myra, tire tracks. We leave tire tracks. What tire tracks? The rain's washing everything away. My... Now, let's get him into his own car. How, how, how do we know it's his car? Well, who else would have left the car here? Now, come on. Myra? Oh, in a couple of minutes, it'll be all over. Okay. This is everything he was wearing when he came into the house, huh? Oh, yeah. His watch, his ring. He's got his wallet? Yes, yes. And the attaché case. Leave it on the front seat next to him. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Well, that takes care of everything. Let's look closely. Is there anything that can tie him in with us? I, I, I don't think so, I... I, I don't know. I... No, there's absolutely no sign that this man has been in our house tonight. Let's go home. Mm. Listen. To what? <laughs> That's just it. No more thunder. Storm's over. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Come on, let's get up and have a big breakfast. You mean you can eat? I'm starved. You slept too, I noticed. <laughs> I was dead to the world. Didn't you sleep? No. Why not? Myra, you and I were... You and I... We didn't kill him. I admit it. It's just that I'm nervous. I suppose... What if he dropped something around here? Like what? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe his handkerchief. Well, that's not worth being nervous about, but take a look around the place. And, and for a ways down the road. He might have dropped something or, or, or lost something. So go on out. Take a look. I didn't see a thing. Well, that's good. But that doesn't mean there's nothing. What could there be? Oh, 
some little clue there always is. Oh, come on, Joel. It, it, it's over and we're out of it. Are we? Yeah. Now let's start to live. This car is gone. So? I drove down to where we found it and left him. It's gone. Somebody must have found him. Yeah, I suppose. Look, Joel, we knew he'd be found. Did you drive into the village? No. Well, it wouldn't be in the papers yet. I didn't hear anything on the radio. <laughs> well, now, what's the first thing we should buy ourselves? We won't be able to spend much for a while. Why not? We'll have to lie low. For what reason? Till it blows over. Till what blows over? Look, a man has a heart attack, dies at the wheel of his car. If it turns out that some money is missing, what does that have to do with you and me? Now, I'm right, Joel, and you know it. Yes, 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 you're right. It's just I... I just hope we didn't overlook anything, that's all. We overlooked nothing. Now, you want to feel great? Open the dresser drawer and take a look at those beautiful $20 bills. You mean you left it in the dresser drawer? For now. Well, that's crazy. Suppose they search the house. Who is going to search the house? Why should anyone search the house? It ought to be put in a safe place. Okay, okay. Find a safe place and put it there. Now, you want to feel terrific? You want to do something you should have done 25 years ago? Go call Frank and tell him where to head in. I told you, we have to proceed cautiously. The fact that we're broke is pretty common knowledge, you know. I mean, the storekeepers in town know it, and and, and Hedrick at the bank is aware that we're usually late with our mortgage payments. So? So? How would it look if we suddenly started to flash a lot of money around? Who said anything about flashing money? Well, just being able to pay your bills when you have no visible means of support. I... Well, everybody knows I, I can't sell any paintings. Oh, why do you always try to make things so complicated? Complicated? It's common sense. So if I, I just worked for a while for Frank, it, it, it could be uh, a blind to account for where our money's coming from. And in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, this money, uh, this fellow Lucas will be rich in history. Come on, let's do it my way. Why are you stalling? Anna, who's stalling? You are. What are you waiting for? Things are not that simple. Things are never simple. Well, for all you. I'm saying is we have to be extra. Who's that? Oh, go see. The money. You said the money was in the drawer. See who was at the door. And don't act so nervous. Well, all right, but. Open the door. Hi there, Joe. Sheriff. Well, if I come in. Oh, uh, sure. I'm. Uh, well, not at all. C come in. Oh, Myra. Hello, Sheriff. Cup of coffee? <laughs> I never said no to a cup of coffee. Sit down. Thank you. Well, what can we do for you? I don't know. Oh? You know the storm last night? <laughs> do we ever? I thought it had washed the house away. Yeah, well, this morning, Jess Fallon finds a car parked alongside the road, a mile and a half from here. The fellow's behind the wheel looks awful still. Well, he should have been. He's dead. Dead? From what? Jess notifies me, and I put in the call to Doc Kessler. Doc says the man died of a heart attack. Oh, that's awful. And what happened was... Uh, fellow run out of gas. Poor guy. Yeah. And that's the one. Well, why, why is this a job for you, Sheriff? Well, I don't know if it is or if it isn't. Doc thinks the fellow got out of the car and went for help. Oh? Uh -huh. And that rain? Well, you, you think he'd sit tight, huh? I would. But Doc looked him over and said to me, see here, his clothes were drenched, his shoes were soaked. How'd they get so wet? Oh. So he must have gone out. Well, which way? He was a mile from you folks in one direction, about a mile from the Rumfords in the other. Which way did he walk? Well, did you... Uh, did you ask the Rumfords? They've been away the past two weeks. Uh, 
I guess the poor fellow headed that way and couldn't get into the house. Knew there was no point going further in that direction because it would take him to the turnpike. Isn't that right, Joe? Uh, yes, uh, I, I would suppose so. So he, uh, he must have made his way back. By the time he got to his car again, he just didn't have the strength to go on. Managed to get inside where he... Yeah. Well. Oh, could I have a spoonful of sugar? Sure. Thank you. Uh, we don't think he went towards the Rumfords. No? No. He got out of the car and headed in this direction. Well, how, how, how can you know that? Just 50 yards or so down the road from you is where the county's building that culvert. You know, over the creek. Yes. A lot of that bottom yellow clay has been washed over near the other side of the road. And Doc Kester, he said to me, Hey, look, see? It's on the edges of his pants. Ah. Uh, so, that means he must have come within, oh, 50 yards oh, of your house. Oh, the poor man. And, and, and we didn't even have our lights on last night. Oh, he must have just got discouraged and turned back. He, he was so close and... and... How close? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh... I had to ask a question. You know, it's kind of a stupid question, I admit, if it's got to be asked for the sake of the record. Am I? Well, what's the question? Did you see this fellow last night? Now, before you even answer it, I know it's an unnecessary question, because if you had seen him, you would have asked him into the house. You would have helped him, naturally. But, as I say, for the record, did you see this man last night? No. Life is a series of options, and the secret of success is to keep them all open. However, there comes a time when suddenly one approaches a point of no return. Yes or no? And one is committed to a series of consequences that can never be foreseen or even imagined. That one word, no, and Myra and Joel are in it all the way. Or at least until Act Three, which is on its way. They say you can't cheat an honest man. I don't know what that means. Because millions of honest men and women are being cheated every hour on the hour. Perhaps the implication is that we all have a little larceny lurking somewhere inside us. Perhaps we do. The question is, how much is a little? You didn't see this fellow last night. No, Sheriff. Well, I guess that takes care of that. You mean he could have been within 50 yards of the house? So near and yet so far. Yeah. It's tragedy, eh? Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Hello? Yeah, yeah, he's here. Hold on, please. It's for you, sir. Oh, thank you. Hello? Yeah. What's that? Who... She is? Well, I, I guess this place is a new light on things, don't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I better wait for you here. Well, now, uh, how do you figure this? What is it? This whole thing just got kind of complicated. What do you mean? This fellow Lucas, dead man. His wife drove in from Philadelphia as soon as she was notified. And insisted on seeing me right away. Jim told her where I was, and so she just flew into her car and took off. Oh, poor woman. You wouldn't even wait for me to get back to my office. I, I wonder why. Well, Jim didn't say. She happened to mention something about money. A lot of money. Oh? Uh-huh. Yeah, and Jim said he'd never seen a woman so nervous and upset in all his life. Well... The strain of her husband's death. Well, what money was she talking about? The old man had was 50 bucks in his pants pocket. Jim asked her to wait, told her I'd be back soon. But she said, no, 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 no. I couldn't wait. She had to see me at once. Then she was out of that door like a shot. But why? Well, 
shouldn't take more than a few minutes for her to get here. Hope you folks don't mind. Mind? <laughs> Why should we mind, Sheriff? Now, now, please, Miss Lucas, try to be calm. But there had to be a quarter of a million dollars. A, a what? It's it is that sache case. A quarter of a million dollars? Sheriff, J.B. is dead, and he's going to be dead for a long time. I could cry for him later, but now I have to work for him, for his name. I wish you'd just tell me what this is all about, ma'am. What it's all about? Where do I begin? J.B. worked for Phelps Company. J.B. made that company, but he never got any recognition. And then last month, Phelps promoted a man with about half of J.B.'s ability over J.B.'s head. And J.B. didn't say anything. Well, I was afraid he might do something crazy, but I... Oh, now, now, ma'am, you just take it easy. Here, drink this. Well, thank you. He didn't come home for dinner last night. I was starting to worry that he might have done something foolish. He did something very foolish. Because about 10 o'clock, I was... The phone rang. And I, I, uh, I'm in Baltimore. Baltimore? Why? You didn't tell me you were going to... J.B., are you crazy? I was crazy, Lorraine. But not anymore. But why? Lorraine, I took $250,000 from that safe. You stole $250,000? I said took. It's my money. No, it belongs to the firm. I know, legally. What are you going to do with that money? Run away. I'll send for you later. Oh, J.B., you can't. I know Listen. that, and so I'm over it. I'm over a lot of things. I want to live, Lorraine. You come right home. Yes, and I'll put the money back in the safe, and no one will ever know I took it. And then I'll quit Phelps forever. Oh, J.B., and I bet I'll stop getting these pains in my chest. What pain? Ah, uh, forget it. I'm on my way home. He did your office, Sheriff. Called me and I rushed down here. The attache case. It was empty. The money was gone. Uh, ma'am, nobody touched that case. But that money. Oh, don't you understand? The two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is gone. Yeah, but nobody here, nobody knows anything about it. Well, who was the first person to? Who discovered my husband's body? It was Mister Jesse Fallon. All right, then I demand that he be brought. Ma'am, he's a preacher. I don't care who he is. Now look, Miss Lucas, you're excited. Well, what do you expect me to be? So why don't I just give you a lift back? I've got my own car. Huh? Who's the mayor here? Is there a district attorney? Now, I'm... ma'am, you don't want her to. Do my that. husband's name, his reputation is at stake. Don't you understand? Ma'am, I'd like to help. Help? But you you helped all of you. You helped yourself to that money. You, that preacher, if he is a preacher, whoever he is, you're all in on it. Now, ma'am, you got no right to make such an accusation. Listen, I'm going to fight for my husband. I'll, I'll hire a lawyer. I'll call a governor. <laughs> J.B. Lucas will not be disgraced for something he never did. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I was forced to make such a scene in your home. But, but that, that's all right. But I have to do something. I have to do something. Yeah, uh, Miss Lucas. Yeah, just a minute. Wait for me. Hey, I told you folks there's complications. Myra. What are we going to do? Nothing. Nothing? This changes everything. How? Well, do you want that man to go to his grave branded, branded a thief? When a man dies, does it matter how he goes to his grave? But that poor woman... What could have happened to her? Nothing. I, I won't stand by and allow you. Yes, you will. That man died for you. Are you out of your mind? He was a man exactly like you. A man who could never get what was due him. If he's looking down on us or, or up at us, what do you think he'd want us to do with the money? Return it to that miserable boss of his? Never. He'd say, keep it. 
do what I never had the guts to do. Enjoy it. But that poor woman... That stupid woman. If she'd worried more about him when he was alive, if she'd shown that kind of anger and determination, where was it all when he needed it? That woman... Her anguish, it haunts me. We decided... We'll keep the money. No, no, we won't. Joel, if you... No, we'll be found out. It's impossible. There's no way. They're closing in on us. What are you talking about? Did we leave a clue? No. We keep telling that to ourselves, but we did. That clay. That clay from the coven. So? Proof, proof. Proof that Lucas came this way. But not that he was in this house. Yes, there's a clue. What clue? I don't know. But there has to be a clue. The clay proves that he came this way. Now, a clue to prove he was in here. Then tell me what it is. I can't tell you what it is, but I know it exists. How do you know? It has to. Joel, when you talk like this, it scares well, me. Well, you should be scared. You should be scared. We'll be caught, Myra. There's a clue. You keep saying that, but what can it be? When that man was in this house, I know I did something. I'm aware of having done something. There is a clue, and I know it. Oh, get hold of yourself. I'm trying to. No one can prove Lucas was in this house. There is no way to prove we took the money. Now, let's forget about it. Let's get? I'm not a man who can steal. Oh, all right, all right. And die like he did of a heart attack the way he did, among strangers the way he did. Myra. This man Phelps killed Lucas the way Frank Desmond will kill you. You'll die in some little southern town with your sample case. Please, my... Joel, there's nothing more to talk about. <laughs> Joel? Duty to report. Joel? Duty to report knowledge. Joel, Joel, wake up. Duty to give information. Telephone. Telephone. Joel, Joel, wake Uh, up, uh, wake uh, up. uh, uh. Oh, I was fast asleep. Why'd you wake me? Do you know what you were talking about in your sleep? Uh, I never talk in my sleep. I never talk in my sleep. Who are you going to telephone? Telephone? What are you talking about? Joe, well, everything's going to be all right. Everything. That clue. What clue? The clue that proves he was in our house. There is no such clue. Oh, there is. There is. Oh, go back to sleep. Forget it. Hello? Yeah. Who's this? What? What you just say? Well, who are you? Hello? Hello? Uh, hung up. What did he just tell me? Who can that be? It's late. I don't know. Better answers. Evening, Joel. Sure. Well... Look, I know it's late, but I have to ask you a very important question. Uh, what question? I didn't hand over the money, and there won't be any questions asked. It'll be smoothed over. Well, what are you talking about? The 250000 J.B. Lucas had in his attache case. You see, he did come into your house. He died here. And we can prove it. I can prove it by that bottle of your boysenberry wine, Myra. Oh, good Lord. That's the clue. Now I know. That's the clue. Oh, shut up. It don't matter. You offered him a drink, and it spilled all over his shirt. Doc Kessler analyzed the stain. That's what it is. He, he, he could have had a, a, a drink of wine anywhere. No, no, my, not with this much sugar. Nor this red. 
You grow them berries special, Myra. <laughs> now, look, there's no permanent harm done. You just hand over the money and nothing will happen. You can't prove Myra, it. Myra, you can deny it, but you'll be watched and bird dog the rest of your life. Phelps will have private detectives. You'll never be able to spend that money. On the other hand, no one has to know anything. It's, uh, it's in the front room. It was you who called me on the phone, wasn't it, Joe? Me? You called me and tipped me off to the wine stand, didn't you? No, I didn't do it, Sherry. Why would I do a thing like that? Why? Uh, if only I could answer that, Joe. If only I could answer that. <laughs> Is it because a man cannot change his morality as easily as he changes his shirt? Or was it the subconscious that dialed the sheriff's office? Or maybe being on the road was more important to Joel than anything else. He may have a good friend out of town. I'll be back shortly. The leopard, as you know, cannot change his spots. The snake, however, changes his skin at regular intervals. Does that mean leopards are more trustworthy and constant than snakes? Do not pet either one. Who is to say that Joel's reluctance to take the money is a blow for honesty? He may have felt that he was getting a better deal from Frank. After all, money isn't everything. Our cast included Joan Lovejoy, Ralph Bell, and Marion Seldes. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. It all looked so easy. Ah, who's trying to knock off your bank, chum, huh? Yeah, then what? Well, I've cased this little neighborhood bank corner of Stillwell and Seven. Now, Friday should be the big day when the cash is still alive, not buried in the vault. You drive. That's all the risk you take. I pay off one third. Yeah, is it worth it? <laughs> you gotta know it is. That's payday for the consolidated machine plant. There's like 150,000 riding on this. You want in? Hmm? Yeah, you got me. I want in. When? Next Friday. Take off sick. In the morning, you pick up the getaway car. From then on in, it's smooth sailing. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>